it's been kind of a crazy week. Maybe Mag- Ma- you know what magnanimous might be that you know, I did take full credit for the pump this week in in Bitcoin because you know I, I pulled out the green pants last week and we, we kind of predicted that it'd be a pretty good week, which it it has. It is all about the having, right? It's you know we had the demand shock. Price went up. Now we got the supply shock coming. And the supply shock, it's actually big. Because I think, I don't know if you guys put out the data, somebody put out the data, um, 69%, maybe it was a lie, uh, 69% of a BTC hasn't uh, moved in the last 12 months. The fear and greed index for Bitcoin reached 79 out of 100 last week, the highest level since the cryptocurrency achieved an all-time high of $69,000 in November 2021, indicating that cryptocurrency investors have been experiencing euphoria in the last week. Momentum, volatility, and volume-based market sentiment is presently swaying between excessive greed and extreme greed. Investor confidence has recently surged, and the reason for this is the meteoric rise of spot Bitcoin ETFs. It has come to light recently that these exchange-traded funds have substantially grown their Bitcoin holdings since its introduction on January 11th, amassing a total of almost 264,000 Bitcoins worth more than $13.5 billion. Out of all the assets, BlackRock's EBIT accounts for over 4.389%, or more than 115,980 Bitcoins, following closely after with more over 83,800 Bitcoins, or 31.76% of the total, is Fidelity. Third place goes to Bitwise, with 22,518 Bitcoins valued at $1.1 billion as of February 17th, followed by ARK Invest with 26,640 Bitcoins and a value of $1.3 billion, respectively. Significant quantities of Bitcoin are also held by other exchange-traded funds ETFs such as Invesco Galaxy, Venic, and Valkyrie. As of January 12, 2024, GBTC has sold off around 161,162 Bitcoins, even though these ETFs have acquired almost 264,000 Bitcoins in the five weeks since debut. On the other hand, with inflows of almost $11 billion, the ETF effort was clearly successful. In the weeks preceding the 2024 halving, renowned Bitcoin investor and hedge fund manager Mark Sko anticipates even more thrilling surprises for Bitcoin investors. As discussed in Sko's most recent weekly roundup with BlockWorks Macro, he expects Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies to experience substantial price increases. However, financial institutions such as Merrill Lynch, UBS, and Vanguard do remove their bans on ETFs over time. Extra funds will be transferred. A major portion of BlackRock's capital comes from large institutions, sovereign wealth funds, and pension funds. This is true even though the biggest corporations are still firmly opposed, therefore that demand shock will persist. Today, April 8th, production reaches 900 BTC per day. As far as anyone can tell, the halvings will most likely take place on the same day as either the solar or lunar eclipse, which is kind of strange but intriguing. Everyone gets pumped up when 420 is almost here. In my opinion, it will be 48. We don't know for sure, but it appears like the number now. It would be really crazy, though, if it did happen to coincide with the solar eclipse. However, this need is being challenged by the massive amount of coins you received 1 million from Satoshi or whomever that are available. Another estimate puts the number of missing or stolen coins anywhere between 3.5 and 5 million, while another number states that there are multi-sig coins that have become stuck somewhere. On top of that, there are 10 million owned by individuals, the majority of whom are hodlers who have reportedly threatened to comply at any cost. We go from 900 to 450 a day due to the supply shock, though. If the hodlers or hodlers, as you choose to call them, refuse to part with their coins, it will have a significant impact on the miners' ability to make a profit. Another issue is that not all of the coins have been sold by the miners. While some have, others have been hoarding somewhat. Since this is a genuine issue, the shortage will only worsen. Then there is the emotional side of things. Consequently, one could reason that the SEC has already determined on many occasions that ETH and Bitcoin are not securities. So it stands to reason that you should also approve the Ethereum ETF if you're in favor of the Bitcoin ETF. However, rationality is completely irrelevant to this, as I witnessed while seeing Gigi on television recently, all he could do was cry. Because not everything is equal, it is more difficult to tell. We are currently in the last days of crypto summer, which is one of the things that always happens at this period of the cycle. 
We transition into crypto fall in June and then we reach the parabolic part. People are anticipating the halving, thus in the late stages, you see this type of market activity where Bitcoin gains the lead. When one cryptocurrency moves in tandem with another, especially ETH, the others follow suit almost like a ratio. They used to walk in perfect lockstep at one time, the score was 10 to 1 or 8 to 1. It starts with one coin and eventually makes its way to the others. Some of them even manage to get noticed, which leads to their prickly antics. You notice it with Doge and Shiba in the last cycle, it's not happening quite as much this time around, but at least they're not getting as much attention. That adorable puppy doesn't appear to me every day. Still, I'm thinking frogs and other amphibians this time around. I believe that in the case of Bitcoin, I shouldn't say anything until I have confirmed it by physically visiting wallets. The wallets that were stockpiling Bitcoin before the coin ETF approval were visible to me. If you ask me those had anything to do with BlackRock, the idea was that they were stockpiling them for future purchases, which they could then turn a profit on. Perhaps even firm buddies were involved. Perhaps they are involved with hedge funds. You probably saw it every day, so it was probably someone, but I have not yet conducted the forensics to determine who it was. It was a distinct type of front running. For example, when we talk about front running in the context of Coinbase, it's usually because someone is anticipating an earnings report or some other event and wants to get in on the action as soon as possible. Because some individuals were so certain this was going to blow up, a lot of people were trying to get in front of the pack. Additionally, you could observe that it increased daily approaching earnings and ultimately increased even further after earnings. However, that is not the same as this style of front running. When the demand for the ETF started coming in, I think people realized it would be hard to locate enough Bitcoin to buy, so this was a way to get supplies. That may explain the current situation. Therefore, if everyone were doing the same thing, the price of ETH would be rising and it would outperform by a small margin. It has been really close, but I'd say it has been slightly better in the previous several weeks. In contrast to the Bitcoin ETF, where the sponsors gave you pretty strong signals that everything was fine, I'm leaning towards that. And I haven't heard anything about attorneys putting in a ton of billable hours on Ethereum, what with all the back and forth meetings.